Hello and welcome to this week's Sharing Your Great Practice. Now this week we're in Chatteris in Cambridgeshire and I'm in Cromwell Community College where one history teacher has been encouraging her pupils to challenge, to argue, to disagree, all in the name of creating better historians. <laughs> to kind of test whether you agree with my idea. Hannah Dalton is head of history and the challenge she faced was how to raise yeah. the attainment levels of lower ability history sets at key stage three. When I started teaching uh, these groups I had differentiated some of the activities but I was finding as we were getting towards the end of a sequence of lessons that actually they couldn't make the judgments that I wanted them to make. They discussed them okay, we came up with ideas as a class uh, and then when it came to the actual summing up of these ideas I got one sentence like peasants lives were hard and that's it after a whole 12 lessons where we had looked at peasants lives within towns and villages and so I was really struggling with how to increase their, not just their willingness to write, but their ability to write more complex judgments, really. So she devised a scheme of work, Miss Dalton's big idea, where the starting point is to get the class to challenge what she's saying. I was doing a topic of Reformation Ely, because that's our local um, cathedral, uh, and we were looking at the impact of the religious change brought about by Henry VIII's uh, divorce from Rome. Uh, and I wanted them to be able to say what happened in Ely as a result of this. So I was looking at various types of literature about teaching history, looking at other people's ideas. I read Fordham's work on how to get his A-level students to write better essays. And I thought, well, I'm working at these low ability year sevens. What can I get them to do? So I came up with my big idea, if you like, um, and it was called Miss Dalton's Big Idea, and I was going to sell it to them as something that I had been working on for ages and ages and ages, and I wanted them to critique it, if you like, because they always like telling me that I've got something wrong. They love finding out that I've got something wrong. So we started with that as a first um, step. To help them, character cards are handed out so they can question the story through the eyes of their character. I have these character cards uh, which just literally gives a, a brief description of who they were in Ely or Cambridge or the nearby area uh, and their name and I tell them that you are going to become that character for the next lesson or so and dealing with individuals on that basis actually really helps. They really do engage with this particular character and start to care about what that person might be and because it is only one character at that time that they're dealing with it's a point of access for them because they only have to deal with those issues then. Now to be able to achieve that higher level attainment target in History Key Stage 3, having a wider vocabulary is essential. So we talk about the changes that did take place in Ely, so we talk about how the Bishop of Ely crept in one night and the orders of Henry and defaced the statues, uh, and then we look at whether the characters that they have would be happy about this change or sad about this change, uh, and that's really simplistic. and. By the end of it, actually what we end up seeing is that happy and sad is not enough. They need other words because there's this whole bunch of people in the middle who aren't really happy and aren't really sad. They may still go to church, but they are feeling something. So they are kind of hungry for words, even though they don't necessarily have them. So using Woodcock's idea of uh, language, we look at these word maps and say people don't just feel happy, they don't just feel sad and give them a, a whole lot of other words. And then we start to place them around the classroom for these different words. And suddenly, this one straight line becomes a complete mess. And we say, well, hang on, guys. How are we going to round up all of these different feelings? Uh, and then they, they get completely lost in that. So we try and write some sentences incorporating all that they've learned and experienced with these character cards. And they find that very difficult, which is fine. I quite like that. I like getting into the muddle and into the mess. And it's not just attainment levels in history that have benefited, it's building on key literacy skills. The work that Hannah's doing is really helping to reinforce the, the literacy skills that the students need to be able to overcome the difficulties that they're having and also to find ways of, of getting onto the improvements they need at level five and above. I think what it's improved is it's obviously made them more articulate, but also it's improved their thinking skills. And it's improved, I think, their grasp of important concepts in history. Uh, before, um, you know, historians have 
quite often wanted to say this is the story, this is the narrative, this is the description, these are the facts, instead of exploring at a deeper level. And I think this approach has allowed the children to explore at a deeper level, which is obviously good for all aspects of the curriculum. So if you want to learn how to raise Key Stage 3 history skills, here are some tips from the staff at Cromwell Community College. Don't be afraid to take risks and don't be afraid to encourage the students to challenge you. Become a non-role model as a history teacher and encourage debate and historical argument. Use character cards to help each pupil see the diverse range of viewpoints. And building vocabulary is critical to higher level thinking and so it has to be put at the centre of the history lesson. If you want to find out more about sharing your great practice, just visit our programme page at teachers.tv.